Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. We just thank you for another day in your kingdom, for this is the day that you have made. We're determined to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you, Father, that you that we can enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We thank you for another day to live, another day to love, another day to laugh, another day to cry, another day to ponder and think and inquire in your temple, another day to commune with you and come into your presence and to, to enter into your pavilions and the secret places of your tabernacle, Father. Another day to give thanks and worship you for all that you do, Father. The fact, before I ask for anything, I give thanks for everything. I give thanks for your divine provision. I give thanks for your divine protection. I give thanks for your guidance. You are the light of the world. You are El Shaddai, God Almighty. You are Adonai, God who is sovereign. It's you who holds the wind in your fist. It's you whose garment binds the water. It's you who created all things that are material out of what was immaterial through your spoken word. Oh, Father, we thank you that we serve a mighty God, a God, an eternal God. You are El Olam from everlasting to everlasting, the ancient of days. So, Father, we're just believing in faith and rejoice today. Rejoice knowing that today is a day closer to the return of our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. And it's this that we glorify. It's this that we rejoice in. It's this that we can have jubilant spirits, Father, knowing that our King, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, is coming back for us, that we're his possession, that we're his children, his inheritance. Oh, Father, we thank you. We don't take that for granted, Father. Father, we thank you for the shift in the atmosphere that you bless us with blessings seen and unseen, known and unknown, that you carried us through this pandemic for such a time as this, that we would be your hands and feet, your voice and your ambassadors here on the earth, proclaiming your goodness, proclaiming the gospel of the good work that you finished on the cross when you said that it was finished. Oh, we thank you, Lord, but we know it didn't stop there. We know it didn't stop there, Lord. That was just the beginning. Hallelujah. Because three days later, you rose with all power in your hands. And as a result, we who are filthy, we who are wretched, get credited with being righteous. We've been justified through faith. Amen. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your precious blood that washed away the sins of the world. We thank you, Father Lord, that your grace is more than sufficient. Our God is a mighty God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, with power and love. Our God is a mighty God. We can proclaim that from now until the end of the age. So, Father, as we are thanking you for this breakthrough, we're just believing, Father, for greater. We're believing for more. We feel the shift in the atmosphere. And we're just calling, Father, you for let your blessings rain down on us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, that you are opening up the floodgates of heaven and pouring out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. So, Father, as we prepare ourselves, we lift this service up to you that it would be a fragrant aroma, that it would be pleasing, that it would reach your throne. And, Father, that it would be in concert for those that abide around your throne and dwell in your presence, singing holy, holy, holy. So let it be pleasing unto you, Lord. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor now and forevermore. In Jesus' holy name. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah, ACC. Hallelujah. I'm going to need y'all to stand to those feet if you're able. Amen. Hallelujah. I see a new day dawning. I see a new day dawning. And I believe it's almost here. I believe it's almost here. And I see a new day dawning. I see a new day dawning. And I believe. Almost here. I believe I it's almost here. Lord, we are standing in your place. Lord, we are waiting in the shining place. Papa, 
hearts are ready to receive all of the blessings that you have. Oh, open up the floodgates. 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 Then your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Hallelujah. Let it fall, Lord. Do y'all feel your increase coming? Yeah. All right, amen. Did I feel my increase coming? I feel my increase coming. Did I believe it's almost here? I believe it's almost here. My breakthrough. Did I feel my breakthrough coming? I my breakthrough's coming. And I believe it's almost here. I believe it's almost here. Say, Lord, we are standing in your presence. Lord, we are waiting patiently. Our hearts are ready to receive all of the blessings that you have. Open up the floodgates. 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 Your rain. Your rain. Your rain. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Let it fall, Lord. Open up the floodgates of heaven. Let's pour out a blessing. Put a dollar value on 
that are priceless. Amen? Priceless. Peace. Love of the Lord. Assurance of knowing when you walk out, walk out your doors, knowing that, you know, that we have a risen Savior that paid the price for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We need you, Jesus. Praise God from who all blessings flow. Good morning. Good morning. This Sunday, February 14th. Amen. 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 I know, I know it's a holiday. I don't personally celebrate it because it's just another day for me to love up on my wife. But I know some celebrate Valentine's Day. Amen. And um, you know, so. It, it is a day of love, which we to acknowledge and express the love we have for um, our, our significant others in most cases. So if that's a day that you you you, you need to celebrate and um, have special love for your loved one, then so be it. Hallelujah. But I'm just I'm I'm trying to be consistent in my love and and and, and, and raise the level of my love and love more like God loves each and every day of the, of, of, of the year. So I, I, I recognize uh, that God is, God is, I recognize that God's working on me. He's working on my heart and teaching me to love my wife more like he, like he loves us. And I, I, I know in my heart, the more I love him, the more I focus on him, the more I die to my old self, and live for him, the more I can love her in the way that she deserves and the people that I have relationship with. Amen? Praise God for who all blessings flow. We thank you. Good morning again. I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful of what God's doing in this season of our lives. I'm so grateful that this is the year of regeneration. And you might ask what that means. Hallelujah. What that means. That I'm believing in faith that the year of regeneration is, signifies that God is going to bring those that haven't come into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to a place where they can be born again. Amen. 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 That, they, that they would give their lives over to Christ and, and be forever renewed, refreshed, and transformed. Amen. That they would give their bodies as a living sacrifice to our Lord and Savior. That their faith would fall on the good soil. And that it wouldn't, and that it would take root. Amen. I'm believing that in faith. But I'm also believing for those that are in Christ. Hallelujah. It's time. He's calling us to another level. Amen. God is calling us to live at another level. God is calling us not to stay complacent. That there's a pruning season that's been taking place. Amen. And it's time to bear more fruit for Christ. So I'm, I'm, I'm determined to be better and more intentional about fulfilling the great commission that he gave us to go into all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them what he taught us, everything that he taught us. Hallelujah, that's in the scriptures. And then remembering that he'll be with us always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I thank God that he doesn't leave us alone. I thank God that he's a hedge of protection, that Jesus is a fence. Amen. That he sends his angels to encamp around us. Amen. And his divine protection and provision just covers us and keeps us. I thank God for that each and every day. I don't take for granted that I got to work safely and got home safely every day this week. Or let it, let the truth be known every day for the past three years. Amen. Thank I thank God for that. I don't take that for granted. If I don't thank you enough, Lord, hallelujah. As I always say, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. If I had a billion, that wouldn't even scratch the surface of your goodness. Mm, 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 mm. No number. No number could, could, could ever do it justice. So we just thank you. We just thank you again and again and keep in remembrance of all the good things that you've done for us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, you folks out there know, um, saints out there know that we 
uh, Bible studying, Bible showing ourselves approved church. Amen? Amen. And as such, hallelujah, we believe the word of God to be the infallible, the immutable, inerrant word of God. It's, per it's a perfect word. Amen? Amen? It's a word that's true and trustworthy. Amen. It's a word that is everlasting. In fact, the word of God tells us that even when the heavens and the earth pass away, that his word will remain. Amen. Amen. That's in Revelation. Doesn't we say that? We studied that. We studied that just this, uh, this week again as we closed out Revelations. Even as the heavens and earth fade away, that his word will last forever. So ACC. You know what we do. Let's lift our Bibles in the air. And wave them like you just don't care. If you know the Holy Ghost is up in this place, somebody say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I, I, am I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I believe my Bible to be the God breathed, inspired word of our Father in heaven. Leading us out of the darkness into his glorious light. Freeing us from the bondage of sin and death. Into the glory. Into the glory of eternal life, of eternal life, with our Lord and Savior, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Therefore, therefore, I walk in expectation, I walk in expectation of changing the world, of changing the world through the renewal of my mind, through the renewal of my mind, the purification of my heart, the purification of my heart, and overcoming the schemes of the enemy. Oh, with, the enemy. with truth, with truth, truth faith, 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 and love. And love. Forcefully, advancing Forcefully advancing God's kingdom, God's kingdom on, earth, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. If you believe that with every breath in your body, then somebody say amen. amen. If you declare it and decree it, then somebody say hallelujah. 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 Praise God from who all blessings flow. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your, for your word. We thank you for it's our daily bread. We thank you for your word that it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. It guides us in your truth and righteousness. Father, we thank you for your word, Father, because faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. Amen? Amen. So we recognize without faith, we can't even please you. So, Father, I need to be in my word so much more because I want to please you each and every day. Hallelujah. I want to please you more and more. Oh, Lord, we just thank you. Just to put a smile on your face, Lord, just to know that, you, that, that we love you and we're striving to love you like you love us. Not knowing that that may never be able to happen, but we press towards the mark of that prize, of that higher calling heavenward. We're going to press. We're going to strive. We're going to try, Lord, with everything that was the, with this within us, that we die to ourselves, that we might glorify you and live for you and honor you and edify one another. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that your word says, love the Lord thy God with all our heart, all our soul, and all of our strength. Amen. We know that when Jesus said it, he said with all our heart, all our soul, and, and, and all our mind and all of our strength. Amen. So we're just trying to, Lord, teach us to be more like you. Your word tells us that just as far as the heavens are from the earth, that your ways are from our ways and your thoughts are from our thoughts. But help us to narrow the gap today, Lord. Help us to close it and just be a little bit closer. Just to be close with you, Lord. I believe it's the word of James that says, the closer you come to God, the closer he'll come to you. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, I'm trying to be like that old, it's a secular song, but it was a closer than close. Let's get closer. Yes, 
Yes, I want to just be in your presence, Lord. I just want to uh, empty your, your gates with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. I just want to sup with you. I want to ask questions to you. I just want to sit at your feet. Hallelujah. You know, praise God. I just thank you, Lord. I, my, I get chills when I just think about being in your presence. Yes, Lord. I just thank you for all your goodness and your mercy. Amen? Amen. 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 This morning, I did, I did something, do something a little bit different, but we, um, if you can turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. We're going to touch on Matthew 19 a little bit too, but it says, um, but the main scripture today is 1 John chapter 5. And it's going to be verse 14 and 15. And I'll give the context in a little bit, but uh, before I, I get into the word, let me pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we come before your throne just giving thanks, Father, for this another day. Another day to have service, another day to seek your face, another day to commune with you, another day to lavish you with the love that you in our heart, Father. Pray that you would create in us a pure heart, renew a steadfast spirit in us, Father, that we might be your steadfast soldiers here on the earth, that we might be your inheritance, your, your possession, Lord, your chosen people. Oh, Father, we ask that you come into the service right now and decrease Philip, that, that the Holy Spirit might abound in me. Amen. For greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So, Father, I'm believing in faith that your word will be preached fearlessly and unapologetically. That your truth will reign, Father, as this word comes forth. And, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our heart and open our eyes, Father, that we would come into a greater height of knowledge and wisdom. Lord, I'm believing that your word will go forth with power, with precision, fulfill your purpose. So we're just thanking you in advance for what you're going to do in and through me and through, through your people. May we be forever renewed, refreshed, and transformed that we might go out and advance your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And God's people said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before I get into you know the scripture in John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, and I ask Jonathan and 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 and, and uh, Mom Miriam and Ivy and Pastor Ingrid. Well, John is after what book and before what book. I just want to talk to you a little bit because I was going all around this week as to what I would talk about, and oftentimes, you know, and, and, and somewhat changed mid midway through, but not really changed. It just connected one thought to another. But in a full disclosure. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching in my men's Bible study on prayer and fasting now, right? And we're really focusing on prayer. So I've, I've been in a place over the last two weeks where I've really been meditating on prayer and wanting to go in deeper into the things of prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I, I was talking to my wife the other day, and I recently asked her, because of COVID and things changing, and us having to pivot and make adjustments and things like that, um, I wanted to know with my wife, I said, uh, what is quality time to you? I asked her, what is quality time to you? Because I recognize we can spend time here together, and sometimes we'll spend, spend time sitting watching sports and just to be next to her, to me, that's quality time. But for her, that may not be considered quality time. And I don't want to make assumptions that being in her presence, she's fulfilled in the same way that I'm fulfilled. So I asked the question about quality time. And she, you know, she gave me an answer. Yeah, I just want to be, you know, with you and, you know, spend time. Right? Because we spend our lives oftentimes coming and going. She's in the meetings. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in meetings this time. And by the time we have time for one another, it seems like it's just time for bed and we're ready to go to sleep. Amen. Anybody feel like that sometimes? Or the people that you love the most, are you spending the least amount of time with? Or the people that you love the most, you're fighting to get some of their time. Amen. Amen. Well, 
as I was thinking about that quality time, I was thinking about, I want to spend more quality time with God. Amen. Amen. Quality time with God. And what does that look like? What does that, what does that feel like? Amen. Amen. Those quiet hours where you're just getting deeper and going to another level of intimacy with our Lord, communing with him, supping with him, as it says in the word, Jesus talks about, come, I stand at the door. That if we knock, you know, that, 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 we, that he'll knock and we let him in. And that he would come in and sup with us. You know, that's a that's an intimacy in when you sit and dine with somebody and you're breaking bread and you talk and whatever. So I want to go to those more intimate places with God. Amen. And, uh, and, and so I've been thinking a lot about prayer. And yes, because I'm teaching on prayer. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do a series on prayer in the in the um, near future. It may be in the month of March, but I'm, I'm going to say in the near future so I give myself some wiggle room. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes the Holy Spirit just comes, and I, I might have a plan, but he might give me another plan. Amen? Yes, amen. amen. So I'm going to say in the near future. But mainly, my desire is to spend more quality time with God. Amen. So as I think about prayer, and we're connecting to this. Really, what I, um, what I want to know is begin to reflect on what leads to successful prayer. What leads to successful prayer? When you pray, do you know that your prayers are being answered? Yes. Amen. And if, they, if you know that they're being answered, if they're not being answered in the time that you want, do you feel like that's unanswered prayer? Because really, that's where, we're, where I want to go with this. I want to talk about prayer. We're going to spend a ser whole series on prayer. But how are we handling unanswered prayer? Amen. And what are some of the reasons for unanswered prayer? Amen? Amen? Amen. So as I thought about prayer and, you know, what it means to lead a successful prayer life, my mind immediately went to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Is if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I would hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal the heal their land. Amen. So from there, I was able to get four things that might lead to successful prayer. These are just four things. This isn't the whole list. Amen. There's many things that we have to do, I believe. But really, if you could come to God with a pure heart Amen. and a sincere heart, Amen. I think that will encapsulate it. And with true love and true adoration, I believe it encompasses all of these things. Just <laughs> like Jesus said, the first two commandments encompass all the other, all the, the other eight. Amen. 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 If you could come to God in spirit and in truth and with a sin sincere heart, I believe he'll, he'll answer those prayers. Amen? Amen. But okay, as according to that, to that that prayer, if my people who are called by my name, we know, one, we have to be called by God's name. Well, really, what, we're, what he's saying when he says, if my people who are called by my name, he's saying people that act in accordance with his character. Because God's names are in accordance with his character. That's why we can say Jehovah sent canoe and know that God's a righteous God. Amen. 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 That's why we can say Jehovah Shalom and know that God's a God of peace. Right. Amen. That's why we can say that El should die and God know that God is almighty. Amen. Amen. So we know that his names are synonymous with his character. So if this, when he says, if my people who are called by my name, he's talking about people that live upright, that yeah. praise the name of the Lord, yeah. people that seek his faith, yeah. people that walk in love, people that abide and dwell in his presence. Amen? But also, then he says, humble themselves. So we know that humility is honored by God. Amen? And when we humble ourselves and come before him, Understanding that he is our father in heaven, that we submit to him, submit to him, that we surrender all to him, withholding nothing, then he honors that. Praise God. 
And he says, pray. Pray. What is prayer? Prayer, some would say talking with God. Some would say, you know, I'm going to say communing with God. You see, it's more, I don't just want to talk to God. I want to hear from God. I don't want to just hear from God. I want to sup with God. And that's what I'm talking about in this quality time. Amen. And then it says, seeking God's face. What is it to seek God's face? Well, really, we're talking about seeking his presence. When it talks about seeking God's face, we're seeking God's presence. His face is his presence. Amen. As it says in Psalms 105, verse 4, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Seek his face continually. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 7 through 18, it says, rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Or maybe you've seen the book of James in verse, um, chapter 4, verse 8. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Mm, come on, Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. Yeah. Amen. For your loyalty, excuse me, for your, yeah, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Amen. So it's a call. God is telling us to come close. It's a call for us to repent and come back to him. Amen. That you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one more than you love the other. You're going to serve one more and despise the other. You can't serve God and serve mammon, the systems of this world. That's money we're talking about. Amen. 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 Serve God. Serve God. Hallelujah. If you could turn in your Bibles quickly to Psalms 24, I want to read this this aloud. Hallelujah. It's one of um, my favorite, one of my favorite um, scriptures and Psalms. Amen. You all know my favorite is Psalms 27. Hallelujah. I love the 27th Psalm. But I have a few favorites. Psalms 24, verses 3 through 6. The word tells us. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you a chance to move there. I still hear some, some papers rattling. And, hallelujah. Praise God. Folks know their Bibles. Amen. If you need more time, say, Pastor, hold up. If you're ready, say amen. 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 Who may ascend to ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Just like James just calls us to have clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by false gods? They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Who will ascend? Not just anybody gets to come into the presence of God. Just Not just anybody gets to have their prayers heard and answered because if he hears them then he, he'll answer them. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. But then I started thinking, you know, as I mentioned to you about unanswered prayer and I thought about the consequences of unanswered prayer because there's so many of us that, first of all, I think we, we, we jump to conclusions and we operate in our own flesh and in our impatience and our fleshly desires instead of trusting in God. Amen. You see, Amen. I, I learned a long time ago, and I try to tell, you know, I, I speak it into my children and I speak it into others, that God's delay isn't God's denial. Amen? Amen. 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 When I think about Sarah and, and Abram, Amen. Uh, hallelujah, Amen. and he told them they were going to have children. Amen? Amen. He told them they were going to have children. Hallelujah. Amen. All they had to do was believe in faith. He didn't say it's going to happen a month from now. He didn't say when it was going to happen, but he said it was going to happen. Amen. 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 And what, what that lets you to let them know is before they breathe their ass, their, their, their last on this earth, Amen. that they're going to have, a, a, she's going to have a child. Amen. 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 So if it was going to happen a hundred years from when he said it, that means she was going to live beyond a hundred year more years. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But, but in our flesh, in our flesh, we want it now. I like to call it the Baruka syndrome. Amen. And, and, and Ch Charlie and the chocolate. Like, I want it now, Daddy. We can't wait for it. Amen. And because Sarah operated like that, she got impatient. She wanted to rush things along. She wanted to operate not in God's time, but her time. Amen. She gave her, her um, Abram, her servant, maidservant, Hagar. 
Amen. And you know how the story goes from that. That you can lay with Hagar, my maidservant, since I can't give you a, 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 a child right now. And although we know that God has said that I'm going to have a child. Oh, Lord, help me out here. Yeah. Help me out here, Lord. So Abram laid with Hagar and she got pregnant by him and gave him a baby, a baby boy. Ishmael. Amen? Amen. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to throw any shade on the on the ladies out there. Amen? But you know there can only be two queens, I mean, one queen in the household. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. One queen in the castle, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. And then one queen in that castle, once um, Hagar had the baby boy, realizing that Sarah wasn't able to do it, she thought she should be the queen. So they started, you know, they started throwing those little jabs, you know, I, those nuances. I, I can't even act like it, you know, because I know that you, you, you females, you know how to do it. You, you all know how to do it. You all know what you do. Amen. But, you know, at any rate, next thing, next thing we know, you know, there was strife in their life. Strife because they couldn't wait for what God had said. So sometimes our unanswered prayer isn't unanswered at all. God intends to answer it, but just not in the time that we want it. That's Amen? Right. That's right. But when God answers anything, it's at the right time. That's right. Amen? That's right. Because he knows all things. Hallelujah. But unanswered prayer. Hallelujah. So it's not always It's not always that it's not being answered, but we think it's unanswered because it doesn't happen in our time. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And I want to draw that distinction between what we perceive to be unanswered versus what is really unanswered because that's that's critical. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, you know, additional reason for unanswered um, prayer, you know, I was um, let me talk about some of the consequences of unanswered prayer. One, unanswered prayer stands in the way of our faith. How many times I think about so many people where you hear in particular, when they have the love of a law, a lot, a, 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 um, a loved one that's on their deathbed, and they know them to be good people, and in their hearts, they're good. The people we know, we talked about last week, no one is good but God. But, but in their in their mind, their heart, people they love, and they may not pray up, pray to God any other time, but during this moment when it's dire and when things are desperate, and you pleading for the life. Spare the life. Give them life, Father. Don't let them die. And the people die. They get angry with God. They get angry with God because, you know, they, they blame him. How could a good God, a righteous God, let me hurt like this? How could a good God and a righteous God not answer my prayers? How, so it can, it can mess with people's faith. It can become a stumbling block if we allow it to faith. Amen? So it stands in the way of a life of true faith. What else does un un unanswered prayer do? It gives a feeling of being alone or abandoned, even betrayed. I gave the example of having a loved one and a, lo the, a loved one that, you know, during that your time of your greatest need, you call upon God and he doesn't answer. He doesn't give you what you wanted. You, feel, you can feel alone. You can feel like there's no God and that you've been abandoned and what you were hoping for and possibly thinking, you know, that you, you again feel isolated and betrayed. It gives you a place of doubt. It brings on doubt. And doubt for the love of God. Doubt on whether there is a God and you, those things. When we have unanswered prayer, and I'm not talking about to your, to your mature believer because we've seen the evidence or whatever I'm talking about, people that are either on milk or haven't come into the knowledge of, of Christ that call upon his name, that aren't used to praying to him on a daily basis, that aren't used to seeking his face every morning and every night while you're in the car in the quiet time, that you aren't used to that fellowship and that supping and that communing with God. Amen? But it questions, they question the character, the very character of God and his integrity. And there's a distrust that's developed when we have unanswered prayer. Amen. And then last, I would say, and there's more, there's more reasons, but these are the five that I'm giving. We doubt our calling 
as God's intercessors. Amen. If we have unanswered prayer and God's not responding to my call, to my pleas, to my supplication, to my petitions, then is he going to answer as I'm trying to tell people about the kingdom of God and gospel and whatever? See, so we begin to doubt our calling as intercessors. So unanswered prayer can have negative impact on our faith walk, on our journey with Christ. Amen? Amen. But God, but God, let's turn to 1 John 5.14 now because I want to I wanna establish something here. We talked about one aspect of unanswered prayer and we talked about some of the consequences. But really what I want to talk about today is the will of God. Amen? And it's going to come out in this, in this chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give me strength, Holy Spirit. Verse 14 reads, chapter 5. I'm looking, looking at it differently. Hallelujah. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, anything according to his what? Will. To his will, right? Yes. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Amen? I'm going to read that line again. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will. So what it's saying is in accordance with his will, in line with what the will of God is. So let us examine for a second before I give you a definition. Well, I will give you a definition of what the will of God is because we all might have different definitions or understandings or not understand what it is at all. But God's will. The will of God refers to God's will refers to his purpose for life of the believer. His purpose for life of the believer. It implies his guidance or direction in all of life's decisions. Amen? Amen. If I could take you to another scripture that talks about the will of God, and that's in Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. Romans is after Acts, and it's before what, John? John? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh oh, we got to got to work on it. Oh, mind cramps. That's okay. We get mind cramps. That's all right. Just as long as we get those cramps out, we're going to eat some mind bananas too, so we don't get any more cramps. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to drink some, some holy Gatorade so we can get rid of those cramps. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just, I, 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 you all might think I pick on my brother, but I, I, I see so much potential and I've seen so much growth in him already. So really, I'm just spurring him to, to, to keep going, to be better and to, you know, even as I strive to be better and strive to, you know, know my word more and be able to recite scripture and teach better and, you know, just, um, speak the word of God fearlessly and with authority. That's my desire. So I'm pushing in and my sis, and my spiritual daughter Ivy, Mom Mary and my spiritual mom and my wife. Hallelujah. That's right. we're, we're talking about the word and just trying to continue to grow in it. Amen. But in um, Romans chapter 12 verses 1 or 2 the word tells us therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, Amen. holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Amen. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test, approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right? So, the will of God. Amen. The, I love the King James Version because it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
So we're talking about the will of God this morning. And there's three areas that I want to talk about and focus on in the will of God. Amen. Because I'm sure you've heard, um, you know, God's perfect will. And that's a will that we're not always privy to. But God lets us know his will oftentimes, the most, most primarily through his word. Amen. I know God's nature because I read my word and he, I see how he responds in all situations. So I know his nature is honest and integrity. He's true. He can't lie. And this is why the word says he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. So God is only submitted to his word. That's the only thing that he puts himself under. Amen. So I know I would never know that God, if I didn't read the word and was oblivious to everything else, that God is a loving God and a good God. He's a God of grace. It means he gives unmerited favor. If I got what I deserved, or, 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 let me do that's mercy. Mercy is giving what you deserve, but you should have deserved greater punishment. If we got what we deserved because of God's mercy, I'd be in hell right now. I'd be dead, sleeping in my grave. But for the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So God is a good God and is a merit. He gave his son as, as the sacrifice for you and I, for all humanity. Amen? Praise God, the Lamb of God, which washed away the sins of the world. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody out there today. But the will of God. Hallelujah. So the first the first will of God is God's sovereign will. Amen. And it, God decides and orders all that has ever taken place. Amen. Again, like I said, we don't, the scriptures can tell us some things, but God hasn't let us know all things or how they're going to come to pass or anything like that. So this is a will that we don't always know and are always aware of. But I'm going to read Ephesians 1.11 that sort of describes God, God's sovereign will. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Amen. In order that we who were first to put on our hope in Christ might be for, for the praise of his glory. Amen. So, so let's just know that everything according to his perfect will. He does it in conformity. Amen. God's sovereign will. Acts is also, you know, also another scripture I would give you. I'm not going to go there this morning for time's sake. But Acts 4.28, the second will that we know of God and that we, that we are privy to and that we understand, you know, he gives us is his word, his commandments. This is the moral will of God. If you were to go to Exodus chapter 21, 17, you don't have to go there now, but these are the 10 commandments that were given us in Exodus 20 verses 1 through 17. And in his Ten Commandments, God lets us know the things that he expects from us and desires from us. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't defraud your neighbor. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Amen? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen? Honor thy mother and thy father that thy days will be long on the earth and it will be well with thee. So we, he's given us these things so that we have some laws and some tenets in which we can conduct ourselves. So if I'm praying, you know, to God, to Lord, you know, let me have the house of my neighbor across the street, you know, or whatever, and that's against his word. That's coveting. That would be a reason why I shouldn't, that I would expect unanswered prayer because it is in contradiction to the moral law of God. Amen. So one reason, we've talked about, you know, the reasons for prayer, and I gave you 2 Chronicles 7 through 14, the things that you should have. So if you're not praying, if you're not humble, if you, if you have pride, 
if you're operating, you're not seeking God's face, if you're living a sinful life and you, you, know, you haven't turned from your wicked ways, then you shouldn't expect your prayers to be answered. So certainly we can make that, that under, understand that. Yeah. But if you think you're doing those things, but you're not praying in the will of God, then you're not going to have unanswered prayer as well. And the thing that we know is his moral prayer. So we can't pray something in contradiction to his, to his word. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Help me here. And then the third will, which I'm going to call his, his, his permissive will or his provisional will. And that's the will that comes because sin entered the world through Adam and Eve. Amen? Amen. God allows certain things to take place in this world that we would not, that he would not allow, have allowed in the world prior to sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? He made the provision for us because of our hardened hearts and the wickedness that abides, abides in us. And I'll give you an example right now. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to start at verse 1. Let me know when you get there. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament after Malachi and before Mark. When you're there, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word reads, When Jesus had finished saying these things, left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to test him. You know, you know what? I get surprised every time I read that. Y'all have been whipped not once, not twice, not, not four or five. You know, every time you go to test Jesus, they, they went and they came back for more and they get the same thing. You know what? I'm one of those people that fool me one time, shame on you. <laughs> fool me two times, can't put the blame on you. Yeah. Fool me three times, for peace sign. Now that's a, that's the modern day, my mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I am, I'm from the old school too. Where it's the fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame yeah. on me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I don't understand, but they, the Pharisees keep going back. To, so they went back to test Jesus. All right. They asked her, "Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife?" For any and every reason. Haven't you read. Jesus replied. That at the beginning. The creator made the male and female. And said for this reason. A man will leave his father and mother. And be united to his wife. And the two will become what? One flesh. One flesh. So two become one. Amen. Amen. And then the word tells us. Therefore what God has joined together. Let no one separate. That's what we say in the wedding vows. Is that right? So you were wondering where it comes from. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. Amen. 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 There it is. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Question. You might think that's a good question. They thought they were going to trip Jesus up. <laughs> Amen. But Jesus being hallelujah, God almighty. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. For your wisdom, we thank you. He replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. Amen. So it wasn't just let me be clear, it wasn't intended like that in the beginning. We're to marry and stay married all the days of our life in the absence of sin. But the, the, that's God's that's God's law. That's his will for us. I would say that would be his sovereign or 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 his his moral law, right? But because sin came into the world and God knows the wickedness that comes with, with sin, there's times where his moral law or his sovereign law isn't in line with the permissive law. Amen. And I'm going to show you the, the reason why that would be important. If God knows in his infinite wisdom and in his providence that um, a husband is being unfaithful to his wife and that unfaithfulness is leading to abusiveness, right? He's looking for a reason to get out, and you know he does. He, you know she's complaining. She she's not dumb. She's wondering why isn't he home? He gets off work at three, and he's not you know come stumbling, come stumbling into the home, smelling like perfume at ten. 
you know? She's going to put one and two together pretty soon and figure out that, hey, you know, something's going wrong. I didn't sign up for this, right? And, you know, if God knows that, in, in, in this word, it lets us know that um, sexual immorality is a forgivable, but I'm, I'm making a point here. If God knows that this man is going to subsequently get violent and potentially harm or murder his wife, then why would he create laws that keep them in that and not give them out? Amen. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Oh, I know it makes sense to somebody. Hallelujah. But praise God. <laughs> praise God. So his so in, 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 in his permissive will, he allows the divorce. You, you, you can go because he'd rather preserve the, the life. And we don't always know all the reasons. I'm just trying to draw a, you know, a, a logical scenario in which we can understand why God would have his permissive will not in line potentially with the, the, the um, moral will. Amen. So let me finish reading, you know, the scripture on Jesus replied, Moses permitted them to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. But it was not this way in the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another woman commits adultery. Amen. 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 So the other, that lets us know the only, you know, the only forgivable sexual immorality. The disciples said to him, if this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. Well, I, 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 when I read that about the disciples, I was thinking to myself, well, what? That, uh, that's, you know, so you're saying that you can't be faithful to your wife? I mean, I don't, I, at any rate, don't, don't get me started. That's how I interpret that. At any rate, it's better, better not to marry. So you, you can't just have one, one woman. I know it's not easy. It's not probably not easy for one woman to have one man. Amen. But, but you know, hallelujah. Amen. But come on. But but come on. But God gives us strength. Amen. I'm not, that's, that's not one way. Amen. Hallelujah. God puts justice in my, in, 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 in my heart. I, but I, I don't believe in what, uh, you know, I guess the old thing. What's good for the ghost? It's good for the gander. Amen. Hallelujah. But but God has given us everything we need. He can strengthen our heart. In those moments when my flesh is getting weak, I can call upon the Lord and say, Lord, strengthen my heart. Highly create in me a pure heart. Renew a steadfast spirit in me. His word lets us know that when we get tempted, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that he can give us a way out. Amen. We just have to call upon him. So I know there's times where I can't just do it on Philip's strength. I have to call upon the strength of the Lord. But hallelujah, I know that it gives honor to God in be, be, me honoring my covenant. Amen. And so I love my wife. Yes, I love her with all that's within me. But I love the Lord too. Amen. And it's both of those, that, both of that love. It's, it's that love for both of them that keeps me uh, honest and keeps me, you know, focused and keeps me, you know, asking to strengthen my heart love, that I might love her in the way that she deserves to be loved. And that I can love you like the way you deserve to be loved. Hallelujah. That's what I strive for with every bone in my body, with every strand of DNA. Father, I know I can't do it apart from you, though. Hallelujah. You are my source. You are my way maker. You are the vine. I am the branch. Hallelujah. If you, if I abide in you and you and me the same, then we can bear much fruit. But apart from you, Lord, I can't do a thing. Nothing, 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 nothing. I need him more. I need him every day. I need him every hour of the day. I need his guidance. I need his strength. I need him to keep me to wait on the Lord and be of good courage that he would strengthen my heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Oh, yes, I need him to, you know, to cover me and keep me. That he teaches me wisdom that I would know to protect my heart because out of it is the wellspring of life. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us to guard our hearts. So yes, the disciple said to him, this is the situation between husband and wife. It is better not to marry. That's a lie from the devil. But anyway, we're going to keep on. Jesus replied, and God, Jesus gave another example. Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. 
And then Jesus talks about eunuchs. For there are eunuchs who were born that way. So eunuchs, so for those of you all that may understand, let's use Daniel and them as an example. People that were taken into captivity were and brought into the service of the king and the queen so that they wouldn't have the unfaithful, you know, and slip while the king was away or while the king was busy doing what he does or whatever, slip in and be with the queen. They were castrated and made eunuchs. Okay? So that's a eunuch. So there's people that were born without the sexual appetite naturally. Right? Thank God that's not me. Hallelujah. God gave me God gave me another another assignment. Hallelujah. And I pray for those. The, 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 when we talk about in Revelations that there's 144,000 that will not you know, have sex and be virgins, I believe there's 144,000 that are natural eunuchs. It doesn't say that, but, but I, I believe that. Then, but, but let's, let's read on. So everyone can accept this word for there are eunuchs who were born that way. Then he gives another class of eunuchs. There are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. Yes. Well, I'm not going to call out any specific denomination, but we know that there's some denominations or religions that make their hierarchy, their priests, or the, the you know their I won't say their, their cardinals, whomever say they can't um, marry, they're not to have sex. All right, so they're not born, they're not naturally born that way, but they're trying to make them that way. So what ends up happening is that their flesh is burning with what they naturally is, is they're predisposed to do. And as a result, sometimes all matter of chaos breaks out. Yes, yes. All right? So so again, I just want to be, be clear. He's given us two so far. So far, excuse me. He gave us the eunuchs who were born that way, and then their eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others. They're not naturally that way, but they're trying to give the appearance as though they're eunuchs. So that they give the appearance of godliness and holiness. Uh -huh. Oh, come on. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. Amen. And there are those who choose to live life like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. So when I think of that, and I don't know because the Bible doesn't specifically say that he was a eunuch or he wasn't a eunuch, but I think of the Apostle Paul. All right? That he's somebody that gave, once gave his life to the Lord, and we don't hear any evidence. In fact, he talks about, you know, it's better to, you know, to live for the kingdom and not have, you know, and not get married. That would be a higher calling if you're doing it for the kingdom of God. And, um, so that's, those were three classes of eunuchs that, um, that he gives us. The one who can accept this should accept it. The reason why I wanted to read this to you about divorce, because divorce is clearly, hallelujah, praise God. Yeah, so you could clearly see in the moral will of God, where we have the laws and everything, that's where God made a provision. But in, in his initial law, in the beginning, it wasn't intended to have divorce. Amen? But God, because sin entered into the world, he has his permissive or provisional will. It's usually called permissive, but, but, but the Spirit was telling me a provisional will, will, will because it was through God's provision for our, to our sin that we wouldn't be put in danger or, you know, his purpose wouldn't get thwarted. Amen. So there's times where you can pray for something. I can I can be in a situation, God forbid, and it's not mine. I love my wife with everything in, our, in my body, and, and we'll be we'll be married 30 years. Amen. 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 And, and and hallelujah. People are praying for me right now and praying for my wife because this year we're gonna do a conference on relationships and the blessings of being married to to becoming one. Amen. I'm believing that. I'm putting my I'm saying it publicly because I'm gonna make it happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So 
if God's unintended um so in the in, in divorce it let's let me give you an example if I'm praying for a relationship let's say my uh, 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 somebody's marriage and I'm praying that God preserves my marriage because we know that that's what he intended in the beginning. That, that, that there would be no reason that we were intended to be one. That we give our covenants, you know, for sickness and health till death do us part and all of that, right? So so we that would be in line with God's word. Amen? And that would seem to be a prayer that God would answer. Right? But in God's infinite wisdom, we know that people have prayed that prayer and still ended up divorced. So if you gave a prayer that was in line with God's will, why wouldn't it be answered? That's the question that should come. And again, this is where we don't know. His permissive will may have allowed it because he's saving the person's life. We don't, we, we don't know all the reasons why. I could only speculate, but there, there would be what I'm trying to demonstrate for you is sometimes there's reasons that our prayers don't get answered because it's either not in the will of God or there's things that we don't know that may be, may be in the will of God, but it may not be in his permissive will because he knows something greater beyond what we know. Does that make sense to you all? I hope I'm explaining it correctly and, 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 and well because that's um, that's important to understand as we start to dissect and start to get to the meat and the teeth of unanswered prayer. And as we get into prayer and all and, and, and all of these things, it's important that we recognize that there's things that we can control, but ultimately what I'm going to say is if we desire a life of, of, of prayer where we can be, as it says in James 5, 16, in the second half, and I love the King James Version, the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You see, I want to, when I go before God, I want to know that he can hear me and that he's answering my prayers and I want to know, Father, that he's giving me the, the strength and the patience and the fruits of the Spirit, the long-suffering and all of those things to wait on him in his time whenever that prayer is going to be answered that's why I believe it says pray continually he's not a genie he's not the God that's going you know you, you say oh Lord I need it yesterday and it's going to happen yesterday God's going to give it because he wants to develop our faith he wants to continue to have us trust in him amen that's the goal of all this trusting in God in knowing that whatever situation he's put us put us, that, that, that we're in, that he has us. That we can let go and let God and trust God. Trust the Lord thy God with all of our heart. With all of, with all of our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways that he will keep our path straight. I love the King James. Direct our paths. Amen? Praise God. Yes, that's the desire of our hearts that we would have prayers that are effective and fervent and that they would achieve the desired end of what we ask for, knowing that we can go before God and we say thank you, as Jesus said thank you, because we know that the prayers are already answered. So as we're going to get into that in the weeks to come, hallelujah, thank you Lord, that we can go deeper in knowing that when we enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, hallelujah, and send our petitions up to the Lord and supplications that if he hears us, if he hears us, then we know that our prayers will be answered because this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That we know that if anything that we pray, anything according to his will, if he hears us, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Amen? Don't you want to know from that scripture that you pray like that? whatever you ask, you hear him. Just like I know God wants to know whatever our prayers are, are in accordance with his will. Amen? Amen. 
we shouldn't have prayers that are selfish or prayers yeah. that are prideful. Oh, if they're in accordance with the word of God, if they're in accordance with God's will, then they should be selfless prayers. Yes, God, he desires to do well for his children. He desires to bless us in ways that we would never know. His word says, if we who are wicked, I know, I know my deficiencies. I know a lot of my wife's deficiencies. Amen. But I know this, there's nothing we wouldn't do to try to provide for our children. Amen. But, the, you know, if the word says, if we who are wicked can give good things to our children, then how much more will our Father in heaven? So I know that God desires, it pleases him to please us, to give us the good pleasure of our hearts. Those that delight in the Lord, he will give the desires of their heart, the word tells us. He's a God that supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He's a God that loves, hallelujah, he loves seeing his children have that same love for him to know that the things that we're seeking aren't things to satisfy our flesh, but things to advance the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus first, others second, I say yourselves last. If we operate in that joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength, that joy that, you know, nobody can take away, the world can't take away because the world didn't give it to you, then we will the prayer warriors I know that God has called us to be so I just pray that this word would resonate with you and this understanding having a greater understanding of the will of God so that we wouldn't let our prayer be contrary to his will but have a greater understanding that even within his will there's his moral his sovereign will his moral will and his permissive will and for our good, because his word still reigns in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's That still reigns that there's times where what we think may be in our best interest, God knows isn't. And therefore, our unanswered, pr this unanswered prayer for our, for our good. Amen? That sometimes... God's rejection is God rejecting in fact to be perfection to our unanswered prayer. So Lord, we just thank you for being a God that shows us more of yourself and that we can come into an understanding of your will, Father, that we might pray in accordance with your will in whatever we do, that we might be that living sacrifice, Lord, holy and acceptable and pleasing continue to take us deeper Father, continue to transform our hearts Father, that give us that that holy heart surgery you know, that, and, and Lord that we would be forever changed that circumcision of our hearts that we would be your faithful people here on the earth, loving you more praising you more giving you all surrendering all to you withholding nothing that we pray for now from now until the end of the age in the mighty and precious name of our Lord our Savior our King our Redeemer Jesus Christ Amen 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 Amen, amen. And amen. amen. Praise God amen. amen Praise God Praise God from whom all blessings flow Hallelujah Well HBC it is that time of the service on this day. We thought we were going to have a snowstorm. We weren't yeah. really expecting anybody. Uh, well, we knew it was going to be any kind of huge snow, but but God. And so we just want to um, uh, just remind you that this is the time of the service where we at, we ask uh, that you, if, it, if it's in your heart, to please give. Um, this is the time for giving. And I do actually want to read the giving, um, you know, our giving statement. First and foremost, we give uh, glory and honor and praise to the Lord who uh, provides. He's our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. 
And we wouldn't be able to do uh, what we do without the giving um, of, of our church family, which would be our members, ACC. Um, and we don't take that for granted. We don't take you all for granted. Um, I also would be remiss if, if we didn't thank those that continue to sell into this ministry so that we can advance God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So I want, and they are a part of ACC. I never want to make a distinction between those that are actually physically in the, our home or that have been a part um, of us either at BC High or in, in our backyard. There are people who have been with us from the very beginning but have not been with us physically. And I want to just uh, give a huge shout out to them. You know, Kurt Schroeder, we thank you for your continued giving. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, I know that you are on that Tuesday night uh, Bible study faithfully, and we're grateful for you. Daphne Chu, you are a part of ACC. You're in part of the Bible studies. You, when you were here physically, you were in, and, um, you know, in church. Um, you tune, on, tune in every day. Calvin and Kareen Hurdle, we thank you. Um, you are, are when you're in town, you're here. Uh, you tune in and you're giving. We, we really appreciate you, Sylvia and Brad Owens. Absolutely want to say thank you to, to them. You know they are uh, world travelers. Even in, in, in this COVID, I know they've slowed down a bit, but their jobs they're they're, they're in high demand, and um, they make it a point to sow into the ministry at ACC, and we uh, really want to say thank you for all that you do. Chris, um, you know, Kim um, and Lisa Cavoli in California, we've got, you know, a nice California connection. Um, we thank you. We also thank Sam Hughes. We also thank, you know, Kai Gavin, who's in college, but has been sowing into this ministry since don't take that for granted that that's you know you train up a child in the way in which they should go when they get old they will not depart Amen. he has a great understanding of that um i just want to make sure mr and mrs whitcomb clearly you know um have been such a blessing to acc and mark and cindy feinberg just really want to say thank you to you all because we have been able to make such a difference in the five years it's gone on five years um, that we've been in existence, and we're very thankful to you. So I want to briefly just read our confession of tithing. Uh, Pastor Phil, did I leave anybody out? I know everybody gives, you know, people will give. Yes, the Wickhams, you said. Yep. Okay. Yeah, praise God. We thank you. Praise God. God for everything. Um, we are cheerfully sowing uh, our seed into ACC and the kingdom of God. As sons and daughters of Abraham, we've been blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, we will sow our seed with expectation that we will reap a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. We recognize that we cannot be God's giving no matter how hard we try. Therefore, we will honor the Lord with our wealth and the first fruits of our crops, that our barns will be filled to overflowing and our vats will brim over with new wine. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank you all, ACC, ACC, ACC. We thank you all so much for your continued giving. If you are watching and you are uh, so led to give, because one thing we want to do is make sure that whatever you do is in your heart, right? Um, and so if you are so led to give, please uh, tune into our website. Uh, click on our website, which is www.awakencc-bls.org and uh, click on the Give button. And we do not take that for granted. We also know that we are a church. We are a business. And our business is saving souls. Um, but we want to make sure that we're doing things decently and in order. And you, if you have not received your um, statement for giving in 2020, or if you have any questions about, you know, the figure that you see, please let us know so that we can get it. We recognize that the IRS extended the date um, for filing taxes, but we want to make sure that we get these things out to you ASAP. And we typically, we can do that by email. So if you want to inbox us, um, I was reading, um, and Polaris has to um, put it together. They've been working on uh, making sure that we get those statements out to you. Amen? Amen. And then finally, uh, just as we are in, in right, I was going to go into the announcements. You know, as we uh, are in the year of 2021, which is the year of regeneration, there are a lot of things that we are planning to do this year. And, you know, um, 
want to make sure that we're staying connected to you and we offered a number of ways in which that can happen on the prayer call on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays from 5 to 5 30 ish with Pastor Phil Baby P Mackenzie and Miss Pinky please prayer changes things we know that when two or more gathered in his name there he is in the midst Pastor Phil and Mom Miriam without failure on Saturday mornings it could be between 8 8 to 10 depending on what's happening with them but they make sure that they connect and that's our corporate prayer we'll get to a point where we're starting to invite people back in you know to have to have prayer corporately we also have men's Bible study on Tuesday evenings at 9 39 o'clock 9 30 I don't know right because it's 6 30 at our west coast time and that's for the men tune in powerful time thank you brother Jonathan because I know you are always on it I hear you sometimes and I'm like yes and then he does he represents and then on Thursdays ACC has our you know has our Bible study and that time is 7 30 amen do it earlier because we have dinner but is there other announcements yes I wanted to I wanted to make an announcement and good morning again we love you all and because of that love we want to continue to do the work of God and empower you financially one of the things that we're going to be doing on March 13th I'm saying it's going to be from 1 30 to roughly 3 30 is we have Sam Hughes who's an expert in the real estate we're believing that God is preparing us people to make the transition from renters to owners amen and as such it's important that we're empowered with the knowledge and the wisdom and the methods on how to do it and and make profit and make sure that you have the wise investment and all the things to look for so I'm encouraging everyone to come out it's our first time doing anything it's free yep and it's the first time we're doing something in real estate specifically we've done we always done it in money and stocks and things and we'll continue to do that as well but it's important that we make sure that we meet people where they are and you got put this on my heart to that we're going to do a new thing as we're continuing to live at the next level and and be all that God called us to be level up amen level up so um we're thanking you for that we have something special today we and I and I apologize for last week I had missed it but and we recognize that this is African American History Month and Black History Month for some I I say African American history so you know because I'm from Africa y'all amen hallelujah blacky black yes so at at, at any rate um, we have two of our our saints two of our congregates that are going to come up Mm -hmm. and read for us and honor some of the people whose shoulders that we've stood on and that have blessed us so that we can have some of the liberties that we experience today amen so we're going we, we will always want to pay it forward amen that's right. That's because, right. you know pay it back by honoring them but pay it forward that honors them as well that's right as well as our lord so we're first going to call up um, my, my, my spiritual daughter and have ivy um, come up amen amen amen, amen. amen. to be in front of you all this morning. I wanted to share with you all and bring some light and love to the li- to the life of Phyllis Wheaton. You may ask who is Phyllis Wheaton, and I'm thankful that you do. Phyllis Wheaton was the first American poet to publish a book. Born in 1753, she was brought to New England from West Africa as a slave when she was nearly eight years old. The Wheaton family purchased and named the young girl, and after discovering her passion for writing, which they caught her writing with chalk on a wall, they tutored her in reading and writing. She studied English literature, Latin, Greek, and the Bible. With the family's help, Phyllis Wheatley traveled to London in 1773, and she published her first poem. Soon after, she returned to America, and she was granted her freedom. of 2003, a sculptor, Meredith Bergman, installed and dedicated a sculpture to her here in Boston as a part of the Boston Women's Memorial. This 
memorial was established to honor important contributors to Boston's rich and vibrant history. The sculpture is located between Fairfield Street and Gloucester Street on Cobb Ave. Phyllis Wheatley was chosen to be in this memorial because of her progressive ideas, commitment to social change, and the impact of her legacy and writings. Her statue represents youth and imagination and is a fitting tribute to the first person of African descent to publish a book of poetry in America and the third woman to do so in the American colonies. Her book was entitled Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral. On the monument, you will find several inscriptions including a brief biography and her poem Imagination which reads as follows. Imagination, who can sing thy chords? Or who can strive the swiftness of thy course? Soaring through air to find the bright abode, thy imperial palace of the thundering God. We on the pinions can surpass the wind and leave the rolling universe behind. From star to star the mental optics rove, measure the skies and range the realms above. There in one view we grasp the mighty whole, or with the new world amaze the unbounded soul. In addition to making an important contribution to American literature, Wheatley's literary and artistic talents helped show that Amer African Americans were equally capable, creative, intelligent human beings who benefited from an education. And with that, I leave you with her poem on being brought from Africa to America. Twas mercy dropped from my pagan land, taught by united soul to understand that there's a God, that there's a savior too. Once I reached I a redemption, neither sought nor knew. Some view our sable race with scornful eye. Their color is a diabolical dye. Remember, Christians, Negroes, black as slaves, may be refined and join the angelic train. With that, I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Phyllis Wheatley. Hallelujah. I love learning new things and, and Phyllis Wheatley being the third African uh, American, I mean, person in the colonies and first African American who wrote poems in a book. Amen. I'm going to remember that. Praise God. I thank you for that, Sister Ivy. And now I want to call up my, my, my brother, who I'm, I'm just so very proud of, and I'm proud of both of them. But in his spiritual walk, Jonathan Long's going to come up and, and, and bless us with another person whose shoulders we stand on. Valentine's Day, and I just wanted to say that as well. So the person I wanted to um, I wanted to talk about today was there's so many black um, leaders who just came before us and just came before my time that just um happened to make an impact and for our community and our people. And I want to speak about someone who that um they just released a movie about was Fred Hampton, um, social activist and for the Black Panther Party. He was doing great things. Um, as as Pastor Phil would say, he was doing a new thing back in our time, back in the late 1960s, 1968 to 19. He started a little early in the 1960s because he started when he was 10. He was giving out free breakfast to people in his neighborhood for his community members. So he was doing things, trying to uplift and empower people at an early age. So what happened is his story a little bit is he was just trying to uplift and empower the neighborhood and people of the community in Chicago. He got a, got the gangs together, tried to unite the people. He tried to um, he wanted to empower all empower um, impoverished people, people of poor communities, black, white, brown, Spanish. He wanted to just let our people know that there were things we could do if we came together and we united. So what happened was the FBI made him and the Black Panther Party the number one in the, number one in the nation as far as the nation's number one terrorist group because they were organizing, strategizing, and just doing things that were just going to unite all people to make us better. Just like they killed all our black leaders, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. They killed Fred Hampton in his house. Um, December 4th, 1969, he was only 21 years old. So think about this. He was 21, but his name still rings bells in 2021. 
So that means he was that powerful of a person and made that impact, that great of an impact on our people and in our community at that young of an age. So that's why he's um, impactful to me because I'm trying to do the same thing. And I know that if we unite and come together, we can do great things together. We can actually stop all the violence. We can get, um, you can come and have businesses, have things. So I want to do that. And I just want to highlight all our black leaders, our black male leaders who are doing things and did things that paved the way for us. So I just thank you all, ACC, and God bless you all. I have, hope you have a great, blessed Valentine's Day and a great, blessed week. Amen. 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 Is this yours, my brother? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And I just Amen. wanted to share with you. That's that's powerful because I just got through and I would recommend to anybody watching the movie um, about the, the Judas and the Black Messiah. Mm-hmm. And man, we just watched it with my daughter Pilar this Friday and Daniel Kaluuya. Um, gentleman who you might know starred in the movie Get Out. He actually is the star in Judas and the and the Black Messiah. And it's a powerful movie, but it lets us know about the life of Fred Hampton. And it's just another one of the brothers that paid the ultimate price in trying to advance our people. Like we know we have so many um, that, that did that and that's given the, the price of their life. Amen. So we just um, again, we stand on the sh- shoulders of those that have gone before us. So we lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberties. Amen. And we need to continue this fight because we recognize that stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod. Felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Amen, Father. We just thank you for um, what you what you what you've done, that you've given us so many courageous, so many warriors, so many that toiled and bled and Sweat and gave all that they had. I I I I, I, I always watch Harriet, you know, and, and 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 that inspires me. I watch the Hidden Figures, another great movie that did not. If it hadn't been for the movie, I wouldn't have known how instrumental we were in Nassau, and and, and actually that I went to school with Katherine Johnsons, uh, to college with her granddaughter, and she's a good friend of of of, of my wife. To, the, to this day, but it's, so it's just there's just so much that we need to do, and we need to be more intentional about sharing and learning our history. It's not taught in our schools, so we need to take responsibility in our families and let kids know that there is a national anthem that we, that we sing. We should know that. I taught my kids when they were young the the, the African American or Black national anthem by James Weldon Johnson. Uh, so. I just, I just thank God for our heritage. I thank God for those that bled, sweat, and cried and, um, before us. Those that didn't decided not to succumb to slavery and oppression and um, all manner of things. So again, we can have some of the liberties that we have today. So if we can stand, I'm going to pray us, pray us out this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, glorious and heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for letting us know, you know, our heritage. We thank you for those that serve in this house, the laborers. Uh, But we know that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. So, Father, we pray that this service was pleasing to you as we're studying and trying to learn more about your will, how how we can have successful prayer and be uh, effectual, effectual and fervent prayer. The, of your righteous people. We know that we're not righteous by anything that we've done, but by everything that you've done. So, Father, we just come before you um, giving thanks that as we leave this place, we never leave your presence, as we know you never leave ours, that we, we'll, you, we'll take you with us wherever we go because you're in our hearts and that you'll be forever of, of, abide in our hearts that we might um, honor you and love you and that we might walk upright on the earth, advancing your kingdom and earth as it is in heaven. So now unto you who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask and think according to the power that worketh in the church and worketh in our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, may he be forever praised from now until the end of the age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God's people said amen. 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 amen.